Good morning. My name's Stephen Voller. I'm the founder of B Automobiles. We are an electric car company. And I'm here today to raise two and a half million pounds for 30% of the equity. Now, if I can persuade you to invest today, I can leverage an additional seven and a half million from government funding, which is there to support the car industry. For the last seven years, I've been running a battery and fuel cell company. Now, I listed that company on the stock exchange in 2005. And since then, I've been thinking hard about how we can apply the battery technology to make an appealing family car. So we can make an appealing family car. And I've assembled an awesome team from BMW, from McLaren and from Lamborghini with design expertise to make a car like this possible. In the past, I've raised over 40 million pounds for companies and I've invested a half a million pounds of my own money in this business so far to make it possible. And I passionately believe that if we produce an appealing car, then we can sell it as a mass market vehicle. In the first instance, the car will perform like a conventional car. It'll accelerate very well. We have a twin dual motor design, which is unique to us. We file patents which cover 32 different aspects of safety within the vehicle. Now, I believe, with your help, the time is right to create a new green car brand and make the UK car industry great once again. Thank you very much. Asking the Dragons for two and a half million pounds clearly affected Stephen Voller. It's by far the largest amount asked for in the den. In return, he's offering 30% equity in his new electric car business, B Automobiles. Peter Jones wants to know more about Stephen's credentials. Stephen, I'm Peter. Hi. Uh, before I get on to the actual car, I just want to talk about your background a little bit. So what have you done to give your pitch credence about your personal level of success? Prior to forming the battery and fuel cell company, um, I worked for Netscape in the internet business. I was the UK managing director and then raised uh, 26 million of private equity for an internet services company. And the result? That company's still trading and doing very well. Can you quantify that well? Um, it's now profitable. Um, to the tune of? Um, I believe that it makes around four million pounds a year. You've said a few good things about raising 40 million pounds for companies. Out of that 40 million that you've raised, how much and what's been the return on that investment to the people that stumped the cash? Um, considerable. Um, Looking for a number, really, have you got? Th there's been over several different businesses, but most of the people that have been involved have made more than four or five times their money. So give me the last one. You've got a, a listing in 2005 of your company. Yes. How much have you made from that? Um, I made about half a million pounds, which I've reinvested into the B company. It's a solid start for Stephen. He's revealed a convincing track record, and James Kahn is eager to find out more. Stephen, I'd love to invest in a car that, that's going to make a difference, that's going to improve the planet. Um, and I do think the product that's available on the market at the moment isn't very attractive. I mean, they're, they're very poorly specced. And, you know, to me, on the surface, it sounds like a very attractive proposition. If you can convince me that this is going to work, I'll give you the two and a half million. Well, thank you. So, what price are you able to produce the car? Um, we're able to produce the car for about £7,000 at a quantity of 1,000 a month. So we would plan to sell it at the price of about £12,000. OK, and who's your main competitor in that range, in the electric market? Well, there really aren't many electric cars on the market today. And this is, this, from a sizing point of view, this would be like the Galaxy, will it? Um, it'd be of like a Mercedes A-Class or an Audi A2. OK, and what is it that you can do that they can't do that they're spending ten times the amount of money and, according to you, getting it wrong? 
What we're doing is designing a car from the ground up that takes advantage of all the electrical technology which is now available for these new types of cars. And this really is a new way of making cars. I've got an experienced team that can do it in a no-nonsense way. Impressive stuff from the experienced entrepreneur. But Theo Pafitis thinks he's discovered a fundamental flaw. The car industry is in mega turmoil. The sort of money that you're asking for here doesn't even cover the audit fees of some of those companies. Never mind the legal fees they spend. They're all working like nuts at the moment to develop new alternative energy vehicles. And you're going to do it all for two and a half plus, you said, seven and a half million from government. Ten million pounds would have you where? We would have the car fully designed and tested and through its EU certification and all the setup ready to put it into production. In what period of time? Two years. In two years. And your competitors in the meantime, who are already got all sorts of alternative energy vehicles out there at the moment, are they going to stand still for two years, waiting for you? Uh, no, they're not, Theo, but we believe that we can compete with them because of our unique design and unique approach to Tell our Tell us car. about your unique design and unique approach. We have a number of new and innovative design features about the car. One of them is sound generators at the front of the back. Outside of schools, for example, already exists. it's not desirable. Already sound generators already exist. Next, what else is unique? Uh, we have a permanent 3G connection in the car. A permanent uh, 3G connection? So that you can... You've got a mobile phone in the car? Uh, in effect, yes. OK, but try again. What's unique? The car will email you and text you when it needs servicing. The, so, the car will accommodate Give six me people. some technological innovation, not gizmos that already exist. What is your USP? Don't roll out all the things that everybody else has got. What's your USP? He hasn't got one. Exchangeable battery packs. It's not new. Every car company I've seen discussing electric cars has talked about exchangeable battery packs. You've got nothing, have you? We have. We've Other got, than a dream. We've got um, a lot of technology aspects. Stephen, you're going to come to market in two years' time with a car that's behind the times. Well, you won't be coming to market because... You haven't got enough money. You've got no technological uniqueness about it. And I'm being harsh with you because I want you to take away from this a reality check. You've got nothing here other than an ambition and a dream, whilst admirable, foolish. I'm out. Thank you. Unable to satisfy an incredulous Theopaphetus, Stephen loses his first dragon. Deborah Meaden is now ready to have her say. The only thing that stands between you and you losing a fortune and losing everybody else's fortune is my hope that you don't get the funds to do this. And very rarely do I say to somebody, I hope you don't get the funds to do this, but I really hope you don't because you are going to waste your money your funds and everybody else's funds trying to get into a marketplace where there are many, many other people much better placed than you to take advantage of that marketplace. And even here today, you're failing to explain why you're in a better position. For that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Stephen, I, I, I don't get it. It's like, you know, you come along and, and you seem quite an intelligent man. And, and you stand there and you pitch for £2.5 million to come up with a car, which, as Theo says, will be out of date by the time it comes out. I just... Uh, I think it's crazy. I'm out. OK. Three dragons out and Stephen's pitch is unravelling. But will an initially interested James Kahn throw him a £2.5 million lifeline? How much are you setting aside in your business plan to market the product so the consumer knows its existence? Well, uh, we're, we're setting aside around a half a million pounds in the first instance to do that, which I know you're going to say is no drop in the ocean. I would say it's ridiculous. I mean, if you compare that to any other car launch that I've ever come across, you know, the average number is going to be 20 million plus, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, there's only four foot between you and I and two and a half million. You know, don't lose it. I'm itching to give it to you. 
I do believe that we can use um, low-cost marketing techniques, localised marketing, uh, we can use viral marketing techniques to get the Stephen, message across. with all due respect, well, they are tried and tested thought processes. You know, any company that's got half a brain that has a product to sell understands what you're describing, so I won't be investing some out. Thank you. James Kahn is the fourth dragon to walk away from the deal. And Peter Jones is now ready to declare his position. Yeah, anybody that has got to where you have got to in life, you know, you've got to have some sort of credence behind what you're saying. But I think you're losing sight of reality now. Ten million pounds to create the next great viable electric car that the world is going to want to buy. I can't understand it. And I'm not going to invest in you and I'm out. Thank you. It was a lesson in tough love from the Dragons. Stephen walks away without the cash he needs. Well, Stephen, 2.5 million is a very uh, large amount of money. Did you think beforehand this is a very big ask to bring to the Dragons? Yes, we did, but I'm disappointed and I really feel that I've let the team down. Well, in the team, when you're talking about what you've got, does this question, this repeated question about the uniqueness of what you've got come up? We believe that we do have a unique approach. We won't give up, we will carry on, and we believe we can make a success of this. You're going to have to show the Dragons a thing or two. Well, we hope we can, yes. All right, good luck. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Faisal Khan. This is Gary Hillman. We are the owners of Peel Engineering. Today we would like to pitch for £80,000 for 10% of our company and a little piece of history. Peel Engineering own the Guinness Book of Records, world's smallest production car of all time. Uh, Peel's was originally built on the Isle of Man in the 1960s. I've always been fascinated in cars that have tried to invent the future of transport. Whilst on a family holiday in Florida, I went into a place called Ripley's, believe it or not, who have all the world records in their museums, and I noticed they didn't have any cars. We bought the company, Pill Engineering, and then Faisal flew to Florida. I went to see the head decision makers of Ripley's, believe it or not, in their Orlando head office. Very soon into the meeting, we had an order for two cars at £15,000 each. The first one went into their London location, the second into New York Times Square. The footfall increase was considerable and very soon afterwards we had another order for 12 more cars at £12,500 each. This gives us the opportunity of 15 million paying customers at Ripley's seeing our cars, therefore an, an, an extraordinary opportunity to sell toys. I don't think it's just the toys. You know, we can develop the brand further to have ball games, remote control, and also uh, could form a character. As you see, the cars are very cool and cute, and we would like you to uh, come up and try our cars, please. Thank you very much. You're all more than welcome. You can have the, the blue one. Property magnate Gary Hillman and marketing executive Faisal Khan have certainly captured the Dragon's interest with their life-size replica models of the world's smallest roadworthy car. How the hell did you get this? Oh! <laughs> 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 no you two of us. You put your arm around me. Yep. In an attempt to cash in on the success of their cars as an international tourist attraction, the duo wants an £80,000 cash injection to develop additional merchandising revenue. Oh, 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 oh almost. Test drive complete. Yes. Peter Jones is first with the questions. Yeah. Well, Gary Fuzzle, that was really, really enjoyable. We've had the fun. Let's see if actually this is potentially a business. What does it cost to make on average? The cost production costs are coming down. The first time they was ten thousand pound each. Wow. Last ones we had we built twenty built for five thousand pound each on the when we got the order for twelve. So we've, we've got eight in stock. And why haven't you sold those extra eight? Uh, at the moment, we've got a two-year exclusive deal. So you're you're literally stuck now. You can't. Not necessarily. The, the, the exclusive deal is just for the 
replica cars yeah yeah no, that, yeah toys no, okay so we're now down to the reality the reality is that this isn't about the cars this is now about the ancillaries coming off the back of you selling 20 historic cars to start off with yeah and and developing the brand further yeah so you now you want to create board games remote controls and you want to form a character uh, character could be formed yeah give me an idea of how you're going to do that we're saying that the the, the brand could be from matchbox toys to remote control toys a lot of variations tell me about the remote control what's the remote control idea well just a remote control car okay this is very unusual Gary Faisal because what you're asking now is to, you're asking me to now create a business plan for this business so your pitch is I need help to create the opportunity Faisal? Guys, can I say, you run the risk of coming across to me as completely half-cocked. Just, it, look, it feels to ah. me like you've kind of wandered in here, just saying, well, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do retail, and we thought maybe we could do some remote controls. That's not a business plan. Please tell me you've got a business proposition. Yeah, invest in these cars. And we're Why? <laughs> oh, please, just tell me, what, tell, no, what is your business proposition? And please don't tell me, I think it'd be great if we made some remote controls or some, some toys. Uh, to, we, we want to get uh, someone who is used to distributing, building car, toy cars and toy items and just putting That's them in... you, obviously. And putting them in the toy stores all around the world. This is about as half-baked a pitch. Well, it isn't really a pitch. It's a bit of fun. It certainly isn't a business investment. So for that reason, I'm out. It's a disastrous setback for the entrepreneurs. Will Duncan Bannatyne help the duo get their pitch back on track? How many is there? How many designs are there? This is the only two. These are two oh, models. This is the only two. It's not, it's, it's not a big market. You know, it's just not going to sell as a toy. Kids are not going to buy that as a toy. It's not, you know, there's so many toys you can buy, cars you can buy in a little box. You haven't rediscovered the matchbox toys. You know, it's like, it's ludicrous, really, honestly. There's no business here. So I'm not going to invest, so I'm up. Guys, you need help. You need full-time help. And you need a working partner by the sound of things. That's what we've come up for the money. Well, for. we're not yeah. we're not working partners. We're going to give you our money and run your business. Dragons don't do that. I can't invest in you, fellas. So I'm out. Three dragons out. This is not the response the experienced Gary and Faisal were expecting. And Peter Jones is now ready to have his say. This is a very unusual thing in the den. Normally, people come and say. We've got these cars, legacy of the 1960s. We've sold 20, we've got a massive marketing activity going all over the world. We've got Ripley's, they're really keen on it, they're spending this amount of money, we're making £10,000 a car. That is going to generate us £120,000. With your extra £80,000, that gives us £200,000. And we've arranged with a toy distributor to manufacture these products and then distribute these products around the world because there's a real buzz about the 1960 British classic. Peter Jones. There's my money. Thank you. <laughs> that's, a well, business, that's a business proposition. Yeah. Well, that's why he's sitting there and we're standing here. It is disappointing on a serious note to see two sensible guys got something but not taken any level of time to really consider their vision. This is just clearly now not a business and you've made it not a business. And that's why I'm out. A coherent business proposition finally comes to the fore, but from the wrong side of the den. And just one dragon remains. Guys, I think you're right. You know, it's a piece of history. It's a British product. It's made in this country. And there is an opportunity to develop that, you know, into a branded product. I also understand that, you know, and you've been quite upfront. You say, we don't know, because maybe a dragon can help us establish the market, establish the opportunity. Tell me about this Ripley's contract. So, so far they've bought how many? 
They've bought 14 in total so far. OK, and your instinct is, over the next 12 months, what's your gut feeling as to what you think they're going to buy? Another 12. And so they've got 74 locations throughout the world, 15 million people uh, visit each year. So one kid out of 150 people going through the door, if they bought one of those cars, it'd be 100,000 100, cars. Toy cars alone. Um... Based on what you've said, I, my instinct tells me you could make between 250 to half a million pounds on that, would be my gut feeling on 15 million people walking through. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to make you an offer. I'll offer you the £80,000, but I'd want 50%. And the reason why I'd want 50% is because I don't really know at this stage what the business is. Yeah. Can we have a moment? Sure. <laughs> Too much, huh? It's a dramatic about turn in fortune for the duo as James Kahn spots money-making potential in the business. But it comes at a cost. The Dragon's demanding half the company. Will this be too much for Gary and Pfizer? James, thank you very much for your kind offer. What we'd like to do is offer you from our stock of eight cars, one of each of the models, which you may want to use for a charity purpose and 30% of our company. And if you don't recoup, we give you the money back. How's that work? If in two years' time we don't make £80,000, we give you the money back and you keep the cars. If you agree on that, we will have a deal. You've got yourself a deal, guys. <laughs> oh. Good! A novel piece of negotiation from Faisal and Gary, but a successful one. They've given away three times more equity than they wanted, but they now have an experienced dragon on board. Hello, dragons. My name is Dr. Akhtar. I'm a PhD in information security and I'm the founder of My Smart Remote, which provides a vehicle security system. We are looking for £200,000 investment in exchange for 20% equity. Now, the problem is that more than 1.5 million cars are stolen each year in Europe. Now, we have got a solution for it in which a mobile app communicates with a kit installed inside the car. Now, when I activate security on the car using this red button, then uh, the car cannot be started even with its own original keys. In this system, when I want to start it, I will simply tap on this green button, and now I can start the car with its keys. If I need another copy of my keys, it's free, a free app download. And if I need to change my keys, so it's as simple as changing a password. It has some other secondary features, like I can sound the horn with it. You can also turn on the music with it. The music take a little bit time to... Switch on the car with it. And then I can turn on my fan and heater with it. Thank you. Any questions are welcome. Security savvy Dr. Akhtar Khalil is here to raise £200,000 for 20% of his app-based solution to car theft. Is it, as he predicts, the next big success story of the technology world? Sarah Willingham's convinced she's seen it somewhere before. Did you watch Knight Rider when you were a kid? Yes. I think you're kind of a 
10% of the way there to producing kit. Imagine a car that gets you out of trouble when you need it, does everything for you. It would be so cool. But Peter Jones isn't convinced that my smart remote is as clever as the name suggests. Dr. Actor, there's a big looming question at the moment. So why would you want to have a mobile phone app control my car? I have five points uh, to the question that you are asked. Okay. The first one... I mean, I just want one answer. Even, first, in the existing immobilizers and other systems, if you give your car access to someone, they can clone it in less than 20 seconds and you cannot change it that easily. So if... So if, you've got a key to the car and you're creating another key? Yeah. Well, why do I need an app to turn on my radio? Uh, some customers told us that uh, they would like the radio... They want to turn on their car radio when they're not in it? Uh, yeah, like, let's suppose if they are outing or camping, so even sounding the horn has attracted me. Really interesting. What I'm trying to get through, there's one big answer that I want from you. Why? Peter Jones may not see the point, but Deborah Meaden's still keen to find out if there's a market for the remote. Actor, hi. Um, yeah. How much have you spent so far on this? 200k. You've invested 200,000 yes. pounds, and are you actually, have you sold any? It's been, it's been installed in 21 cars. Have you sold those 21 licenses? Uh, no, some of them no. I sold, like uh, uh, t uh, 10 cars, about 10, okay, 10 so cars. Okay, so you sold 10 and you've got, the rest are on test? Yeah. Now, the combined number is 21, but out, out of them, like, uh, in 10, we sold the prototypes. When we do the... I, I feel like we're going around in circles here. Breathe a second, because at the moment I'm just getting a stream of words. The business proposition is confusing Deborah Meaden. And Nick Jenkins has unearthed a new concern. I'd like to imagine a scenario that I have gone somewhere for the, for, for, for the night, um, staying in a hotel, I have left my phone charger behind. I wake up in the morning and my phone is dead. Can I get into my car? Yeah, because uh, you can uh, unlock the... When you, when you tap on this green button on the app, then you can use your traditional keys. Uh, uh, no, I, I, I can't because my phone's dead. Yeah. Can I get into my car? No, because... No, it's a yes or no. If my phone is completely dead, can I turn my car on? Uh, no, if you... No. If, if, OK, if, that is the answer that I was looking for. No. Yeah. How many times has your phone gone dead in the last year? Once. Once, OK. That once is way too often. I think I'm out. Nick Jenkins exits the deal with doubts over the practicality of my smart remote. Can Tuka Suleiman forgive the product's flaws and help finance its future? I'm going to tell you where I stand. He seemed like a very, very intelligent man. Thank you. My advice to you is very simple, right? Focus. You're either in the security business or you're in the gadget business. You know, so, it, so to me, at the moment, it looks like a gadget. I do not question your ability as a doctor, as an expert in your field, but if you're all over the place. And for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. I think you are clearly super smart. And I'm sure there's loads of stuff that you are capable of producing and programming and making work, actually. Um, I really think... <laughs> I can see you just adding and adding and adding to these features and it getting to be quite a lot of fun, if you like that kind of thing. I really can. Um, but it, it's, it's just not for me. I mean, I don't see the benefits of it as a security and the gadgets that it has at the moment is just, it's, it's not something that I could see working in my world. But I'm afraid I'm out. Disappointment for the entrepreneur as he suffers the loss of two more dragons. And the blows keep coming as Deborah Meaden finds yet another flaw in the product. I am very concerned that all this has done is take 
the issues you have around a key, put them into a mobile phone device that actually in itself is eminently stealable. It, it's more attractive. You know, I bet if we looked at the stats on mobile phone and laptop thefts, they'd actually be higher than the stats on cars. That's my big worry about it. And I should probably leave it up to Peter because Peter actually did leave a great big why hanging out there. <laughs> um, but I'm really sorry. I'm out. I do think that you've got a major issue and there are many many reasons that you need to go back and have a look at this and there's many whys. If you can answer a question five or six times when somebody has always asked you why and you can still keep going with the answer, you're nailing it. You can't get past one why here with me and I think there lies the big issue. So Dr Actor, I'm not going to invest in you and say that I'm out. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Dr. Akhtar leaves the den with no investment. But at least he remembered to take the tablet, which starts the car. He won't go. Damn it, I should have pinched his phone. <laughs>